Yes, it's a lovely evening in the city of Abuja where we are still uh, celebrating the brand new year. Uh, I, I will also say Happy New Year to our sports fans out there uh, this lovely evening. And on that note, I welcome you to Sports Update on Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashimi. I know a lot of persons, you guys are having a lot of chicken, rice, drinks out there to eat. But uh, while you are doing all of this, uh, don't celebrate beyond the normal what you are supposed to do just remember that it's a brand new year and you need to look ahead beyond the celebration uh, being that today is the first day of the brand new year all right let, let's quickly uh, look at this story let's go to this story let's start with boxing it's not a good news for nigerian sports uh, where the african boxing uh, uh, body governing body has actually sanctioned omo agege uh, for forgery and uh, this story i think uh, this man has been in the on the news for the very wrong uh, for uh, the very wrong reason for quite some time right now omo agege who um, actually uh, was suspended by African Boxing Conf um, Confederation, that is AFBC, uh, for forgery uh, and uh, blackmail falsification of a document uh, uh, in to be uh, becoming a, uh, a member of the board of director of, uh, uh, of uh, African Boxing uh, African Boxing Confederation uh, in the continent and uh, in a statement signed by Kalong Adre Basili, the Secretary General of the African Boxing uh, Confederation, and Zaya Omo Agege, as he is called, asked the President of AFBC, uh, Yasu Wosen Bahanu, for the sum of $100,000 to facilitate the meeting with the Minister of Sports of Nigeria. A lot of, uh, uh, I can't really go on and on and tell you uh, what this, but what he did was that he fought the document to actually uh, uh, assess funds uh, from the African uh, Boxing Confederation to have a lot of things. Uh, he fought the certificate and then so many things he did uh, right now. The hammer of uh, African Boxing Confederation has landed on Omo Agege, who has been sanctioned and uh, uh, f uh, sanctioned by the uh, governing body in the continent. Uh, he's to pay some fine, and now um, he has uh, been relieved of his uh, uh, from becoming a board member and also as the vice president of the Nigerian Boxing uh, uh, Association. So uh, a lot of things is not really going on uh, well for Omo Agege, uh, Hansaya Omo Agege, as he is called for doing the wrong thing uh very wrong thing sincerely speaking i think this is not speaking well of our sports uh, uh, at all if you do all of this how well are you painting nigerian uh, the sports boxing out there uh, to the world so uh, i think uh, it's a good one coming in from the african boxing confederation by sanctioning and zaya omo agege for forgery and falsification of a document it's not a good one at all for anzaya omo i think this is going to serve as a death to a lot of persons out there who want also want to toe the line of Anzaya Omar Gege of uh, handling uh, some some of handling uh, some of uh, administrative uh, uh, issues and matters. If you really want uh, money to uh, um, to meet with the sports minister, why don't you come clean? You have the president of the Nigerian Boxing Association there. Why don't you go to him or you the two of you align, talk together and see how you can actually. Um, put heads together and see how you can get access to funds uh, and make good use of it to see how you can push boxing forward in Nigeria. The last time out, uh, we were not at the Olympics. Uh, the last time we, we, we participated at the Olympics was in 2016, uh, if you are Jagba then, in 2016, in the Rio de Janeiro, uh, Rio uh, 2016 Olympics. And after then, we've not really uh, showcased uh, in boxing. But thank God, this time around, at least we'll have our female boxers who are the likes of Oshoba who has already qualified for uh, the Paris 2024 Olympics uh, in boxing sport. That's for women. And we still hope a lot of our, our um, other of our boxers who still have uh, the window of qualification before uh, the Olympics start. Well, we pray and hope that uh, they get the qualification ticket right there uh, to go at least to represent Nigeria uh, in boxing when the Olympics will start in Paris, France. But for Anzai Omogege, I think it's not a good one at all. I am in support of what the African, uh, the continental governing body did to Anzai Omogege by sanctioning him. And it de definitely, I think a lot of questions, uh, uh, he's going to go through a lot of scrutiny. And uh, if eventually, if, he found, if he's found guilty, then uh, he's going to uh, uh, face uh, the wrath of the law that is what it is when you do what you are not supposed to do definitely the law will come 
after you. All right, let's uh, leave boxing uh, and quickly look at this uh, particular story. Let's talk about the run leather game. This time around is also not a good news this evening for the uh, sports uh, loving Nigerians, for football loving Nigerians, for Super Eagles uh, fans uh, uh, who are. Uh, Looking at 12 days, uh, like I said, and on the morning show, 12 days to the kickoff of AFCON 2023 in Cote d'Ivoire. But this one, this news is not good at all for our own uh, Kelechi Hinacho, who is uh, who is doubtful for the tournament in Cote d'Ivoire. I think Kelechi Hinacho is doubtful uh, for uh, for Cote d'Ivoire after uh, picking up uh, injury uh, um, on club duties, uh, and he is one of the players who has been penciled down to play in Cote d'Ivoire. I think, uh, uh, as he stands right now, he's doubtful. Um, we know that uh, Taiwa Woni also, uh, who picked up in Juruba, back to training, um, is also in the team. But now, for Kelechi Henacho, how is he going to, uh, 12 days away from now, how well is he going to heal fast before uh, the kickoff of AFCON 2023? in Cote d'Ivoire. So uh, that's why I said it's not a good news for football-loving Nigerians and for the supporters of uh, Super Eagles who is looking forward to win the AFCON title for a record fourth time with Jose Pizarro as the coach of the side. Uh, let's see. But for Kelechi Hanacho, uh, he is actually doubtful uh, for the tournament in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. It's not a good news at all for Nigeria and for the entire team in general. For Kelechi Nihanacho, we wish him quick, uh, quick recovery. We just see uh, definitely if Nigerian progresses in the tournament, maybe before then he can uh, come back to his feet and actually join uh, the team and uh, at least help the team to get the maximum result. Our first game will be against uh, uh, Equit uh, Equatorial Guinea on the 14th of January. That is our first game. We are in the same group alongside Cote d'Ivoire, the host, Equatorial Guinea, and Guinea-Bissau. And you know, uh, these, two, uh, these two teams have one time the other played uh, uh, against the Super Eagles, and one was in our group during the qualifier. So uh, we are still going to meet again in Group A of uh, AFCON 2023 to start 12 days away from now. For Kelechi Yenacho, we wish you from Sports Update on Trust TV, we wish you quick recovery so that you can join up, uh, so that you can uh, contribute your own quota to help the team winning the AFCON title for a record uh, of fourth time. All right, uh, now let's uh, leave uh, the AFCON story and Kelechi Hinacho will still come back uh, to it on, uh, in course of the show. Let's quickly go to the United States of America, the biggest, uh, the biggest franchise they call it and the biggest sports they call it in the world. Uh, they love this game so much in that part of the world. Uh, when it comes to the NBA, they don't play with it. There were actions in the NBA last night, uh, uh, that is in, uh, in the basketball uh, uh, last night for the new season, uh, the 2023-2024 NBA season. There were matches uh, that went down in the NBA uh, last night. Uh, the, the, let's say earlier as of uh, this morning, uh, games were played and we have couple. Uh, we have some of the results uh, on the show. Uh, let's quickly look at the results of games that went down. We have Boston Celtic, the team that is looking so good this season to lift uh, to win the league at least they are going to qualify from uh, their own conference we have the western and the eastern conference uh, and now they defeated uh, san antonio sports uh, 134 to 101 points uh, that, that's how the game ended it ended in favor of uh, the boston Celtics. then the brooklyn nets uh, lost to Oklahoma City turned that 108 to 124. It ended in one, 124 for Oklahoma City Thunder. And the LA Lakers, uh, they lost by 10 points to New Orleans Pelicans uh, in that particular game. And then Orlando Magic also lost their game to Phoenix Songs uh, 107 to 112 for Phoenix Songs. Uh, for the LA Lakers, 109 to 129 for New uh, Orleans Pelicans. And then Sacramento Kings uh, uh, smash, trashed, defeated, bruised uh, Memphis Grizzles, uh, 123 to 92 points. Uh, that uh, game uh, was uh, one-sided. I actually saw uh, some clips of that game. Uh, it was just uh, for uh, a ninth for the Sacramento Kings. They, they ran riot against the Memphis Grizzles. I think they didn't have an uh, answer the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and the fourth quarter for, for Memphis, uh, Memphis Grizzles. They tried to come back on that game, but they couldn't, and it ended 123 in favor of uh, the Sacramento 
kings uh, in that particular game for the Mes uh, Memphis Grizzlies. I think they have. Uh, they say he who fight who fights and run away another day comes back to uh, <laughs> and comes back to fight another day. Okay, let's see how that uh, that uh, game that how uh, let's see how it's going to end in the NBA regular season. Is still uh, there are still a lot of games to go in the NBA. Like I said, we have the Eastern Conference and the Western and conference that is for the nba so for the busting Celtics, i think they are cruising right now let's quickly look at that result again let's just flip over, over it once more and uh, look at the result busting Celtics 134 uh for them and then for the san antonio sports 101 brooklyn nets uh, lost to oklahoma city thunder 124 to 108 new Orleans pelicans also defeated la Lakers 109 to 129 for new orleans pelicans and then orlando magic lost to finish songs 107 to 112 and then sacramento kings trashed uh, Memphis Grizzles 123 to 92 points. That is uh, the NBA results, uh, uh, the games that were played in the NBA. That when we say the NBA, it's in the United States of America, the biggest franchise in the world. All right, let's uh, leave uh, the bas let's leave basketball game and quickly look at uh, a game that will be coming up tonight in the English Premier League. Uh, uh, tonight we have a game in the English Premier League and table toppers. Liverpool will be at Anfield uh, to confront uh, Newcastle United. This is going to be a fantastic game. It's going to be a cracker. If we can quickly have the table, uh, the EPA table, let's see uh, virtue of what will happen in this game. If uh, maybe if Liverpool wins, you know they are going to open up the gap. Okay, now uh, look at where Liverpool stands on the table. They are first on the table and then uh, for newcastle united they are ninth on the on the table if newcastle beat uh, liverpool at anfield they will have uh, uh, 30 31 32 points they will push that means they'll have to push manchester united away from the seventh position that is if they win uh, eventually if they draw if they draw that game they'll push brighton from the eighth position to the ninth position that is what it means that is if they draw they are going to have 30 points but on goal difference they are far ahead they are far ahead brighton on goal difference and then if you look at the top of the table for liverpool they have 42 points if they actually win they will have 43 44 45 points that means they are going to open up uh, uh three points uh, they are going to open up three points gap uh, between them and Aston Villa, they will open a uh, five point uh, gap between them and Manchester City. They will open up five points between them and Arsenal, also. That means Arsenal have to uh, now needs to start chasing uh, Liverpool if that is if they win. But if they draw, it's going to be uh, they are going to open up a uh, uh, two points gap away from them between uh, Arsenal and Manchester City, but they will open a uh, one point gap between them and Aston Villa. That is what it means uh, for the game tonight. So I think Liverpool, they will actually be looking forward to win that game and uh, open up that uh, gap between them and the second on the table and then between, between them also, uh, between uh, Arsenal and Manchester City. And that is what Liverpool is looking at. And for Newcastle, they will want to push up the table. Uh, eventually, if they win, they will displace Manchester United from the seventh position and see how they will be closer to West Ham United. And then they will be looking at uh, the top four for the league. So, fantastic game tonight between Newcastle and uh, uh, Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool will be at home, that is at Anfield. And when you go there, they say you can never walk alone whenever Liverpool is playing at home or wherever they go. You can never walk alone. Will Newcastle United walk alone in Anfield or Liverpool will walk alone at their home ground? It's not left to be seen. Just hours from now, tonight, that game will be coming up in the English uh, uh, Premier League. All right, let's uh, leave that story and quickly look at some transfer story. Let's not forget that the transfer window has opened in England uh, and in other leagues of uh, Europe. So transfers are ongoing and quite a number... Uh, Definitely, we are, going to be, we are going to be seeing some movement of players from one club to the other in the English Premier League. And you know when it is the January transfer, um, it's a fire brigade uh, transfer just to uh, beef up a team. You know, quite a, a number of African players uh, will be leaving their respective club in Europe coming down to uh, the shores of the continent to represent their country. 12 days away from Afcon. Okay, let's quickly look at this transfer story. It concerns our own uh, Super Eagles uh, uh, player who um, 
Spurs left Atlanta after that game uh, uh, over the weekend, uh, in the, over the weekend to join up uh, with the rest of the Super Ego squad, and his long goal uh, gave actually gave that uh, victory uh, against uh, their opponent in the Italian Serie A. Now Juventus and Nice of France are keen on Super Ego's uh, winger uh, Demola Lukman. They I want to actually see how they can snap up uh, Demola Lukman from Atlanta. At, uh, Atlanta is a club in the Italian Serie A, but for Juventus, they are also uh, in the Italian Serie A. They are looking to see how they can snap up this young man who has scored a revenue, uh, uh, about eight goals plus this season for uh, the uh, the uh, Atlanta side where he plays his trade. And for Nice, they are also looking to uh, to snap up Adelimolo Lukuma to join Terry Murphy. You know Terry Murphy playing in Nice uh, in France, so they want to add another uh, super goals player to join up with them so let's see how it goes if he definitely if he will be leaving uh, the team to join up with uh, uh, others uh, from in Juventus or definitely Nice. like I said the transfer window has opened uh, is on right now the January transfer window is on right now and we're going to be seeing a lot of movement uh, players will be moving from one team uh, to the other all right let's uh, leave that story and go straight to england let's look at this particular story uh, i think uh, the manager is not really satisfied with his uh, style of play uh, and what what have you for that is Eric Ten Hag for Rafael Varane he might be leaving he could leave uh, Manchester United this uh, January and that is what it is I think he's among the players that will be leaving the team that uh, Eric Ten Hag has only spoke about it of uh, Rafa Varen, uh, a World Cup winner, a Champions League winner, and what have you. Uh, he has won a lot of trophies uh, with uh, Real Madrid and then the French national team. He won the World Cup in 2018 alongside uh, Popoba and the, the rest players in the Le Blues uh, color. He's a perennial, he's a champion of champions. So let's see if he definitely he's going to leave uh, Manchester United this January. It's not left for Eric Ten Hag and the board to convince him to, to stay or probably uh, at least give him some time to actually um, integrate himself into the team. We know that Manchester United is actually going through a lot of murky waters right now. They are not really having it rosy. Uh, in the English uh, Premier League. All right, quickly before we go, let's take this last one. It concerns an African uh, also um, fears, uh, at least there were fears that this guy might not play for Senegal. That is a uh, Papi Matassa, who has uh, who is near uh, a, a long term uh, that is a new long term deal with Tottenham, and he's he got the goal uh, in that game against Bournemouth on Bournemouth on Sunday when they trashed Bournemouth three one at uh, uh, their stadium. So for Papi Matasta, he he limped off uh, in that particular game after he got that goal for them, but this time around, after uh, looking at what he has to offer the team. Now he's near to sign a new long-term deal with Tottenham, which is actually a good one. And we don't know if he definitely he's going to play because of that injury fears. Is if he's going to be part of the uh, Senegalese team that will be playing in the Nations Cup that is 12 days away from now. All right, that is where we'll leave it on the show sports update this evening. Once more, Happy New Year to all our sports-loving uh, fans out there. Continue to uh, watch uh, sports update on Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashimi. Say thanks for watching.